Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, that was a dramatic intro. I appreciate it. Um, we're getting better at these virtual things, and I'm excited to, to see you all and um, I'm free to join us. Um, we're a little bit delayed. We tried to do this a few months ago. And um, as you know, we were all incredibly busy, probably all of you more than, than we were here at CRISP. Uh, so I appreciate you joining us today. Appreciate all the hard work that you've all uh, been doing over the past couple of years for COVID specifically, but um, for many years before that, as we focus on the Maryland model and different community-based uh, interventions and programs. And, um, and so we're just really thrilled to have you all today. Um, you know, today's conference is gonna be a little bit different probably than traditional CRISP conferences if you've been here in the past. Um, you know, traditionally we've done intros and demonstrations and kind of explainers about CRISP. And um, hopefully, I think in our 12th year uh, formally, uh, we maybe don't need to do that as much anymore. And um, so the content today is really focused on a diverse set of topics and speakers. And we're trying to focus on industry trends and interventions and programs and things that are affecting the broader healthcare system and our population more than just technology. Uh, in fact, you might not even hear people say CRISP that often, and I think that's fine. Uh, this is really about a collaborative space to, to hear what's going on and to hear potentially how CRISP can be a hub of some of these changes, uh, but maybe not very many of them, and, and that's quite all right. Um, certainly, if you do want a demonstration or a training, or if you want to uh, meet with CRISP, or if you have issues at all today, uh, you're very welcome to reach out. Uh, crisphealth.org is our website, has all sorts of great tools. Uh, we also have support at crisphealth.org as our email address, which we are monitoring. Uh, we will also, uh, of course, have our phone lines. Uh, it feels like a, a phone, a phone, but 877 um, 95 CRISP is our normal support line. Uh, so at any point today, if you have problems, uh, but certainly if you just want to follow up with any of the topics or speakers or people, uh, please do. And um, you can always reach us. Uh, I'm Craig Bem. I'm the executive director. Uh, and you can, of course, also reach me, craig.bem, B E H M, at crisphealth.org. Uh, we love hearing from you, and you're all the reason that we can do what we do. Um, so please don't be shy. Um, some quick logistics for today um, all the content is on the main stage. Uh, we're using a new platform this year called Hopin. It's been really great. The logistics um, are hopefully going to be seamless on our end. Everything will be recorded and available to you in both the platform, but also on the website in the future. So if you can't sit in front of a computer all day, uh, no worries. We certainly don't blame you. The sun's finally out, uh, but everything will be available to you. There's also a reception area of this platform. Uh, that's where you'll have the agenda, slide decks, and information on the continuing medical education. Uh, you can also use some tools if you're getting creative and set your own agenda. You can set email reminders. Um, so please interact with it kind of as much as, as you'd like to. Um, and as I mentioned, all sessions will be available, um, but also we'd like this to be as interactive as possible. And, um, and so please utilize the chat feature. I see some of you are, and that's wonderful. Uh, we plan to take questions during most of the sessions, um, and we do want to tailor things. We can't really uh, see eye contact and see people glaze over or lean in when they're more interested. Um, so chat, and uh, we will do our best to monitor it. Uh, we have a really great team standing by. Um, I do want to thank Kevin Phillip, who's been leading the charge on this whole conference, uh, Jamie Gittleman, Josh Schenkel uh, for helping them out, and then Megan Priolo, who leads our program administration functions. Um, and they're all watching and helping. Uh, we also do want to hear from you about whether or not this is working. Uh, not Maybe not like literally today, um, but if the virtual conference is good, if the sessions are good, uh, so we do have a survey and we ask you to please answer a couple questions. And um, again, we are here to support you. We are very responsive um, and receptive. And so please uh, tell us how it's going. Um, I think it's maybe a good time just to mention uh, how humbled we are by this event. Uh, each year our participation grows and um, we actually have nearly a thousand people registered. Uh, that's even with shifting dates, uh, that's on a new platform, that's, uh, kind of across the fact that you're all incredibly busy people. And um, and I'm just, I'm blown away by the fact that you all take your time today. And also that we have so many speakers of such high caliber that are taking their time. Um, it's just really exciting. Um, so thank you for that. Um, we are, um, 
maybe going to use this also as a nice time to reflect on the progress that we've made. So for example, we have over 200,000 patient queries per week by you all, whether it's in your EHR, through our in-context app, or through our secure portal. Um, we push out about 3 million notifications per week. This could be for COVID positive test results, but also encounter notifications. So you primary care providers can reach out and get your patients into the appropriate follow-up care post hospitalization. Um, and then we have hundreds of report views of our claims data, of different programs that support total cost of care model, our, our partners at the HSCRC, and um, certainly the hospital uh, financial folks. Um, it's just pretty, pretty amazing that we went from uh, a very new HIE uh, a little over 10 years ago to the scale and breadth we're at now. Um, in some ways, and I think uh, this is probably not going too far, we really consider CRISP now a health data utility for the state of Maryland. And what that means is that the feeds can come to us from single sites. You don't get extra phone calls or outreach from, from other groups asking for your data. Um, therefore, we reduce the burden of the kind of technology flow and, and ease the technology flow. Um, but then we provide the data uh, safely and accurately and appropriately to only the folks who are supposed to have it, whether it's a physician with a treatment relationship or a care manager or a, a behavioral health clinic when a patient's opted into very specific treatment, um, or maybe an aggregate to public health departments, local health departments, um, sometimes even policymakers. And it's not requiring extra work on the provider part. Um, it's all seamless, hopefully, on the ends of everybody else. Um, but it really becomes an asset through which we can all help improve health and wellness uh, through this single tool. And again, I'm just humbled by the fact that we are here, we're able to serve, we're able to fill gaps for the state. And um, thanks to all of you, we're really leading the country in what it means to have this special public-private partnership between our industry and the policymakers and, um, and a group like Chris. So I just thank you so much for, for everything you do and for being part of this. Um, we are going to get started in a few minutes. We're rolling right into our keynote panel, which is all about health equity. Uh, it should be a really good session. Um, after that, we have another panel. Uh, we thought it'd be nice to have a lot of interaction, a lot of folks talking uh, kind of with each other and hopefully answering questions and, and both their own, um, but then yours. Um, we will then talk a little bit about opioid response efforts. Uh, as you know, that's something CRISP has really been part of ever since the prescription drug monitoring program went live. Uh, but there's some really powerful tools and reports and analytics that are being done, uh, thanks to folks at the Opioid Operational Command Center. Um, we will then award our Patty Brown Innovation Award uh, we were just blown away by the applicants and by all the work that's happening across the state. And that's, again, a really nice reminder of, of the way our industry is able to partner and be creative and really work on patient-facing solutions. Um, then in the afternoon, uh, we'll look at some, we will talk a little bit about Chris. We'll look at some tool spotlights, again, some creative uses of how our tools are really helping interventions. Uh, another uh, couple panels. And um, then we're looking at public health. Uh, we learned a lot, I think collectively, we learned a lot uh, during the pandemic response. And part of my goal is to really make sure that everything we've done that can and should be continued does get continued in some permanent, sustainable, thoughtful way. Um, and then of course, things that shouldn't continue should be wound down. We're not here just for the sake of existing. Um, and then finally, we will talk with our friends from the Maryland Primary Care Program uh, one of the pillars of healthcare reform in the state. And, um, and I think it's gonna be a really nice way to wrap up the day. So thank you. Uh, really excited to see you. And um, in just a couple minutes, we will get started with the keynote panel.